There's lots of research showing that high performance expectations are actually a good thing on average. People with higher performance expectations tend to have more confidence, perform better, and actually exert more effort. But no one's really investigated what happens in the special case when this person with high performance expectations has an initial stumble. Researchers from UCLA, University of Pennsylvania, American Express, GBT, and Chicago Booth studied a world full of high expectations and underdogs. So professional tennis players are all ranked on the same ranking system. So whenever they go into a match, they know if they have a higher rank or a lower rank than their opponent. And it's pretty much always the case that the player with the higher rank is the favorite who's expected to win and has high performance expectations. And the player that has the lower rank is called the underdog. They're expected to lose, so they have lower performance expectations. In tennis, the player who wins the majority of sets wins the match. A men's match has no more than five sets, so losing the first set is a bit of a setback. The researchers analyzed more than 300,000 professional men's tennis matches from the 1970s to 2011. We compared players who were very close in rank, so either very slight favorites or very slight underdogs. So that rank wasn't really informative about who was the better player, but rank did have a psychological impact on their expectations for winning. And what we found is that these players who had a slightly better rank, so they're favorites and they're expecting to win, were significantly more likely to quit if they lost the first set than an underdog who happened to lose the first set. The researchers estimate that favorites are 27% more likely to quit than underdogs. So the only legal reason to quit in a professional tennis match is because of an injury. So when you quit in this match, you have to claim that you're injured. So it, it goes to reason that favorites would either have to believe that they're injured or actually fake an injury. Right? So we, we don't believe it's likely, and we've done tests suggesting that these favorites aren't actually injured at a greater rate than underdogs. So they're either telling people they're injured when they're not, or they're exaggerating their injuries potentially. In order to find out why this is happening, the researchers conducted a lab experiment. So when participants enter the lab, they learned that they're going to be completing a trivia contest. And we told them that they were going to be either be answering questions that were of expert difficulty, that'd be very hard, or questions that most middle schoolers were exposed to that would ostensibly be easy. In reality, the questions were the same for both groups. The participants were also told that their scores would be displayed in a public location, but that they could reset their performance at a financial cost by switching topics. Then we set up the questions so that everyone's performance was going to be pretty low after a first set of questions and gave participants an opportunity to quit. And what we found is that those participants who had the high expectations were more likely to quit when given the first opportunity and quit sooner than those participants who had low expectations. And we found that this was related to feelings of embarrassment. These people that had high expectations felt more embarrassed about their initial poor performance and quit because of that embarrassment, where participants who had low expectations didn't feel as embarrassed and didn't quit. So perhaps players and companies should not only set high expectations, but also anticipate the challenges posed by early setbacks.